Spring and fall might be the most popular times of year to tie the knot, but winter has its own charm. What does it take to plan the perfect winter wonderland wedding? I'm five days away and I still don't know what I'm doing with my makeup. My theme is old Hollywood glam with some modern touches. And I thought maybe for winter that cat eye and red lipstick would look good. I love the concept of your theme for your wedding. I'm a big fan of old Hollywood with a modern twist. So. What I want to be careful with you is, is that your hair is pulled back. You seem to have bangs right now. And I want to make sure maybe you do a half up, half down look, which is very modern, but yet very old Hollywood. And a pewter undertone in the shadowing of your eyes. You can even add a little sparkle in the finish of it. I love the red lips. Do not go heavy on blush. And make yourself look like a celebrity walking down the aisle, but still be recognizable as who you are as a person, let alone a bride. What can I do uh, to stay with my old Hollywood look, but still get my blue in there for good luck. You can add a blue handkerchief to the handle of your bouquet. You can add a blue, you know, there's blue rhinestones that you can actually add to the handle of the bouquet. You can add blue sewn into the inside of your dress. So there's ways to do it that it's not so obvious, and then you get mm -hmm. your something blue. We have uh, two different locations, one for the ceremony and one for the uh, reception. Both places sort of have a point person that acts somewhat like, uh, just to make sure everything goes organized. Our question was, should we get someone to do the entire day as an organizer or just kind of go with a flow? What are your recommendations? Not realizing that there was a wedding planner on this chat as well. I'm sure that <laughs> so the answer is <laughs> I mean, you've got two separate locations. What I don't want to happen for them and for you, I don't want to happen is that there's someone trying to organize two different locations amongst your family or a bridal party. That's, a, to me, a, a red flag. It's always a no-no because you, even, as, even if you plan it with someone specific, it never winds up working exactly as you wish it to be. So my, my answer to you is if you have the funds and you can find a local party planner to be a day of planner, I highly recommend it. It allows you to rest assured that things will go well. We met in August, so we got engaged relatively quickly. Well, not relatively, we got engaged quickly, so <laughs> our families don't really know each other that well, and I'm just trying to figure out a way how we can be inclusive and include everybody in the process as much as possible. You need to make sure that your members of both of your separate families meet before the wedding. That's most important. Have a casual cocktail party, a dinner party, a backyard, a backyard celebration, depending on where you are. You cannot be introducing families for the first time after you've walked down the aisle. It's a very uncomfortable scenario. So have some type of celebratory engagement party and then get certain key members of your family actively involved in in elements of planning your wedding that will allow everyone to feel very connected because ultimately think about this you really uh, you you even don't even know each other that well so I don't want everyone to feel uncomfortable and speaking of just starting it, I want to talk yeah. about your dresses and about making you know a line that is more accessible yes. for women we have um, two models yes, in your do. dresses though every girl in the office has wanted to try <laughs> these on first I wanted to create a line of fashion which was affordable for all women and they go from zero to size 28 to me all women are beautiful no matter what size they are we added a belt to it so it comes without the belt but this is based upon the current collection, which has infused old Hollywood and the Great Gatsby. And I've used a lot of lace in this collection. So the Sweetheart neckline is very subtle. And the Modest A-line, which is the silhouette, is beautiful. This is from a past collection. And this definitely, as you said, is more modern. The bias cut on the side is a beautiful look. This is for a girl that has a little bit more in the hip. Which, is a, which goes to the silhouette again for the right body type. It's not a sweetheart neckline. Now this particular neckline with the crumb, crumb catcher across the top is great for someone that might not be so large across the top. And this actually is very flattering. And also it's got a modest A-line skirt, a little bit more of a modest ball gown as well. The buttons down the back, the satin as well as the flared out bottom is a great combination. Definitely much more modern in overall design.